Oh my gosh. Thank God it's water. Thank God it's water. Welcome to Living with Grace. And here, trying something different, but you're going to see periodically different places in my place that I'll be comfortable sharing with you. I got fireplace here, some of my plants. I'm in the living room. My comfy place is over there, but I situated myself here to talk to you. Welcome to Living with Grace. My name is Anne, and my name means grace. And I believe that we are living under God's grace. It is sufficient. It is great. It is awesome. And when we understand the grace that he has given us under every circumstance in our life, we will be so grateful and thankful. I'm not telling you what to do. I just know that I'm grateful. In this video, I wanted to at least chat to you about, well, the experience that I've been through, some of my stories. You're going to hear a lot of my stories, whether it be sitting here in my room, at the dining table, in the kitchen, out on road, you will hear some of my stories that I want to share with you because I believe that certain things that we go through in life is meant to at least share and have someone else learn from it, especially if we've overcome in those situations. I wanted to talk about abuse. I wanted to talk about, and you know, uh, what is it called? Um, what is it called again? Trigger? No, trigger warning or discretion? Or what is it called again when we, um, disclaimer, disclaimer. It's a disclaimer, right? Disclaimer. So I will be talking about acts, violent acts, some things that have happened to me. I can talk about it now because I'm free from it. But if it's going to bother you, please make sure you're in a safe space, especially with your mind and receiving information, especially things that you can handle this time. And if it's not for you, don't watch it. Watch something else. Check out some of my other videos. But I just want to give you a warning ahead of time because of the stuff that I'll be speaking about is graphic. may not be too detailed in my graphic because I do speak a little bit differently now, more soft and more gentle and more understandable to everyone. But back in the day, my mouth was very foul, so it would just come up. Look. So I'm just giving you a little warning ahead of time with the stories that I'm going to be sharing in this video. And hopefully this video is not that long, but hopefully you're here to watch and to listen to the whole thing if you can. And then you can also learn from it. Not saying that this is, has happened to you, but you might relate to it if it's somewhat the same, right? Because we all see things differently, especially when we're in it and we're actually experiencing it. And if it still traumatized us, if it has still hurt us and we haven't completely healed, we're going to see it in a different light because when you're healed from it, you don't see it the way that it was when you were actually going through it. And trust me, I've been on both sides. So I want to talk about it. <laughs> so I've been met, I've been in many relationships that had me in and out the hospital near death, uh, questioning life, uh, jeopardizing my children in terms of when I was pregnant, but I wanted to break it down to a specific situation in this video because i'm going to give you a lot more stories and you know what just to give you light to why i do this i've done it with many clients where i shared my story shared stories with people that i've encountered given my some of my life stories to those that really needed to hear it but when my cousin Brittany newman had passed it it drew a passion in me that i was like okay i would love to share it with the world because these are topics that people talk about and these are topics that people don't even want to talk about because of what because of the shame and what they went through and the fear of even uttering it again or even speaking about it again because of the trauma that it caused on you on them while right so i i didn't really speak about it i was angry and hurt but the more i did speak about it i found that i was speaking it speaking to deaf ears or people that couldn't help me and then i shut up again and i became angry and didn't had this different foul language <clears throat> and communication with others because didn't trust anyone. And then I got to a place of healing so that when I speak about it now, it's just, it doesn't bother me. I know it's not going to hurt me again. I know it could not happen again. I'm so certain of that. And I also recognize it if it was to come my way. And I see that now because I've overcome it, but I can talk about it freely. When I was, and Brittany, my cousin has brought me to a place where I, I was going to start talking about the story, but I was like, let me finish what I say. 
my cousin Brittany has brought me to a place where it's like, I need to be transparent and I need to help others. I need to be open and use this platform in terms of what I went through and how God's grace has covered me and healed me and kept me because I, I would not be here in many situations, but I'm here to share my journey with you and to help you. Okay. If it does, if it does this much, I will be so happy. That's my reward. So, <clears throat> so my cousin, Brittany, she was in a situation where she was married and she left the marriage and, uh, her husband, I'm, I think they were married at the time. I'm not sure, but had come back around and had taken her life, like with her kids there, with their kids there. He's doing time and I have forgiven him and, but she's no longer with us, but I'm going to make sure her legacy lives on, especially with what she went through. And sh her life speaks many volumes to others that have not lived through domestic abuse or even violence period, or even when someone puts their hands on you and it's continuous until they actually conquer what they have started. So for me, I was in a uh, many abusive relationships thinking that it was normal. Um, I'll give you my testimony in my book or even in another video, little snippets, as this is a little snippet. I was in, and I share a story with you. I was in uh, so many abuse. I said this for the third time in this video, but I'll, I can recall one that really woke me up, but didn't help me value myself in that situation. Like I didn't heal from it. So it, 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 it sort of led me into another relationship that was similar to that because I didn't know any better and I didn't love myself that much to know that I should seek change. I just thought it was everyone else in a sense. And I'm not blaming myself. I'm just saying that today. Now I can say that because I've changed, because I want to change, because I got help, I no longer entertain things like that. I no longer have an open door for that to come into my life because I value myself more. Do you know what I'm saying? And it takes a process and it takes counseling and it takes my willingness to want that change. Why I'm here today talking to you. Right. So I remember I was in this abusive relationship, my God, one of my first ones, <clears throat> but coming from a history of violence from when I was young and rape and molestation and all that stuff that has happened to me at a young age of seven to nine years old and sort of continued on as that doorway was open because of the, the company that was around me and what was permitted and even being in my mom's care and the company she kept why it even started caused me to not believe in myself and not see value in myself and think that this is the way that the world is. So there's nothing I can possibly do. And so I was in this relationship when I was in high school, I was introduced to this person and we, we hit it off. We were like hanging out, like, you know, we were a boyfriend and girlfriend and it was nice at first, you know, he had his little job at the hospital. I was going through school and I was doing my nails and, and all that stuff and doing hair and we'd always kick it once in a while. And we didn't really speak of a future, but we're, we like, we enjoyed each other's company. Now at that time I was lacking, I was going through father, like daddy issues, even though I knew my grandparents raised me out because of the confusion of not knowing that they were my parents or not, because they had us from when we were young, we were calling them mommy and daddy, my grandparents, I'm saying we, cause I'm a twin that when I found out that my mom and my dad was someone else, I was confused. And so when I went with my biological mother, that's when those things happened where her boyfriend took advantage of me. And when I came back home to my grandparents, it's just like the respect was gone. I didn't trust anybody. So trying to put pieces together in my life, I had daddy issues and I was looking for a father figure and I just wanted company. I can say that now because I'm I'm delivered from that and I understand. I can see and understand my behavior because in changing me, myself and seeking help, it was revealed to me. And I was like, okay, I got this. This is where it's coming from. Now I know where, where the root is. I understand my behavior. Not saying that that opened the door to all those other things, but in knowing myself to make changes, I had to go back. And sometimes we don't want to go back there, but anyhow, I was with this guy. Nice at first. And then the temper and then the arguments and then the choking. And then the snuffing, like in terms of punching me in my face until blood was coming out of my face. And then the following and stalking and then following me and putting the knife to my throat, then following me and putting gun in my head, then following me and then taking advantage of me sexually in the park or wherever he could have me. And then intimidating other people that liked me in terms of other guys that liked me and then fighting other guys that liked me and then stalking me and then tell me he loves me and gaslighting me and all that stuff. It was just, 
it was a whirlwind of confusion and I'm not putting full blame on him. I'm just saying that it was an experience I, I went through and I had to go through because God did turn it around for a blessing. And that's, that's another story in itself. But I'm going to talk about how I felt within the abuse because it's like I, I didn't value myself. I didn't love myself. I was waiting for validation from him. I was waiting for him to compliment me. Him stalking me and paying attention to me was some form of attention that I thought was okay because all the other girls I hung around with um, had guy friends that were doing the same thing to them or at least, you know, buying them stuff temporarily, having sex with them and then beating on them up and then cheating on them. It was just a cycle. And I did delete the video. I'm just thinking about it because I could have sworn I put up a video about how I, I almost lost my first son because of this relationship where he beat me like viciously and I went to premature labor. In that video, I did delete it because it was very graphic and I wanted to start the channel over again, but I'm definitely going to talk about it in depth of what happened and what he did to me. So whew, the abuse was really bad. Um, it was really bad. Uh, I tried to leave many times, but it was just always getting back together, um, believing that he would change, um, healing and then going back. Cause I thought like the back and forth, the fighting was normal because I did see it in my mother's home when she did take me in from my grandparents' home. It was just pure violence that I saw with her and her boyfriend and just the whole company and the hanging out and the smoking the weed and the drinking. Like a lot of people, their families are different and we need to accept that. But when you grow up in a certain household, you see these things you think is normal. So then in this relationship, I'm thinking that it's normal. It's the proper behavior to argue, scream and yell, choke and kick, and who can beat up each other and bust up the most blood wins. So uh, in an act, he uh, beat me, and I'll, I'll be more graphic in another video where he beat me really bad and put me into active labor, like really bad. I didn't even know I was in labor. I was six and a half months pregnant. I gave birth to my son. He was two pounds and 13 and a half ounces, and he was 22 centimeters. And he was in the, the neonatal section of Mount Sinai Hospital for a month and change. Then he got transferred to another hospital, and he came out on my birthday. So he was born July 6th, and he came out August 26th. That's my birthday. And then in that, I got kicked out of my home, and I stayed with a friend. And then I ended up moving to Massey Center is a single mother's home. And I ended up staying there for two years, I believe. And I went back to school. My son was in daycare and it, it rehabilitated me to go back into the world and take care of my son and function. So I was uh, in school and I majored in accounting and business while I was in Massey Center. And then I went out in the world. But even when I was living there, I had issues where he would pop up if I go out for a little drink with my friends. And key to this, don't hang out with the same people you used to hang out with when you used to be the person that was doing these things to you. Because trust me, he'll have access to you. I go to certain clubs and he's there and putting things to my head and escorting me out and taking me to the park and having his way with me and choking me and all kinds of stuff was happening. I remember one time when I was living at the single mother's home and there's, a, there's apartments inside where it, it's locked, you're locked in and there's a, a, you know, security or whatever, not security, but like a, a in-home sleepover um, worker and all that stuff. But then when you go outside to the apartments, you no longer have that. And mine was still connected to the apartments. My townhouse is still connected to apartments, um, but people can come in and out. And I went out for one night and I had a sitter. And then as I went back in with my son, because the sitter was within the apartment area, when I went back into my town home with my son, I sent something was going on. I sent somebody was in there. I had called um, the in-home uh, worker. I think they called, the, did they call the police at the time? But they found him in my town home with a weapon. And I knew that I, he was, he was like that. He is like that. Um, and they escorted him out or whatever the case may be. So that relationship in itself, it didn't set the tone to me being attracted to abusive relationships. It was just, it set the tone to decreasing my value and making me feel less of myself because now I'm in a predicament where I cannot take care of myself. I'm fearful of my life. And now I have a child. Even though I'm going to school and I'm around people that are trying to encourage me to do better, it, it was renewing my mindset and unlearning certain things in order to become better that I needed, I needed help with, but I just didn't know at that time. And the reason why I'm mentioning this right now is because when you're going through this, it's real. 
some people don't really understand it but when you're going through this on your own it's real and when you try to explain it to other people they may not understand it but you know what you're going through and you know what's being said to you and you know what you think about yourself and you know your circumstances and you're trying to ask for help but you don't trust anybody and even those that you trust it's going back and forth and you don't know and then even if you isolate yourself and cut everybody off you don't even really know that you need help like mental help in terms of talking about it to a therapist or uh dealing with it in a mature manner of speaking to a professional that's going to give you sound advice to tell you that you're on the right track or give you tools or lessons to get you on the right track in your situation you know what i'm saying in terms of this has happened to you it won't happen to you in a sense if you do this and you got to build yourself like giving you tools understanding education courses and jobs that are out there for you and how to take care of yourself you know hygiene and cleaning up your home and then the mental health even if it's postpartum depression all kind of stuff that's going on those are the tools that people need when you're going through things like that but when you're in it and trust me if you're watching this and you can relate you know what i'm saying all of that is foreign language and all of that is just like stand back i don't trust you stand back you're talking shit. you don't know what i'm going through please and then even when you are, have company around you you're amongst people that have actually gone through it are still going through it and the conversation is similar it's just it's just um you feel comfortable around those that can relate to you do you know what i'm saying so there's no level of growth as much as you think that you are growing there's no level of growth but because i'm out of it i can say that my god counseling helps talking to the right people helps cutting off certain people that you you need to in order to get yourself together and recognize what it is you need and be honest about it and willing to want those changes and make those changes because when you're around all that you don't see yourself when you're around all that it's justified when you're around all that you think that everything's fine and you can handle it and call 911 each and every time they come around or like the the anxiety and the fear that you have is normal and you have to have that all the time trust me you can't function you, your nerves will get shot you lose sleep and you're not able to take care of yourself or anybody else around you as much as you think you're handling it trust me i know trust me i know but I wanted to bring this topic up. Comment below if you can. It's not even about comments and likes and stuff. I even told my son that. I was like, oh, you should do this to get more subscribers, more of this, that. And I'm thinking it's not about more subscribers. It's not about likes and getting paid and stuff like that. It's about the message. Is it being heard? Are you relating? Are, am I helping you with what I'm going through? Am I sharing my vulnerability and my, my journey and my, you know, situations that i that i had that i had went through and how i overcome and i'm sitting here in my right mind is this really helping you are you learning from this this is my this is my heart to yours I, this will make me know that i'm doing a good thing because i find that we go through things for other people so they don't have to go through it or they can recognize that they're that they're in it in order to get out of it so that's my heart that's my reward i'm not about subscribers likes and all that stuff but if you'd like to comment below feel free because it is freeing to talk to someone that actually has gone through it in a positive way. Because for me, when I was going through it, I blamed everybody. I don't blame myself anymore either because I used to do that too, blamed everybody and myself. It was something I went through. It's something that God has helped me overcome because I could not do it on my own. And it helped me to recognize my worth. It helped me to recognize I need help and to receive the right help because there's wrong help but because I was in a willing posture, a willing place, recognizing what has happened to me. And I no longer want to feel that way anymore. I no longer want to be around that. I want better for myself. I want better for my kids. That the willingness was genuine. The willingness opened the door. Because trust me, I didn't trust anybody. I, I, I'm not saying I'm like that now, but I'm guarded and I use discernment very much so. <laughs> and wisdom. And I guard my heart very much so. Because of my past. I don't operate in fear anymore. I don't operate in um, doubt in what God has done because he showed me in helping me get through that. So I'm hoping that this channel is helping you. What's going on is helping you, even my little short stories, but I am gonna go into depth. I am gonna go into depth because transparency helps. Because when you're going through things, you always feel like you're the only one. You always feel that way, trust me. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, thank God it's water, eh? Didn't get any wine. But yeah, like, <sighs> I could go on. I can go on. I, I'm here and alive and well, thank God. And I would say this, that even when I was going through and they offered help, I didn't want it. 
even when I cried and I felt isolated, I felt alone, I felt like no one understood, I still yearned for the truth. I still seeked the truth. I just like, life can't be like this. Like this cannot be, this can't be my life. This cannot. And the more that I seeked for truth, the more that I knew that there was love in the world, the more that I wanted it and craved it is the more that I found it. And I found it in Jesus. I found it in God. And God showed me who Jesus is and how he did all these things for me. And I was like, that was enough for me. I didn't even need to see Jesus. My level of belief was just like, Shoo. because I was like, you know what? If Jesus can do that for me and no human being could, holy smokes. And in my level of belief for that, it set me free spiritually. Now, physically, there's a way of healing, but it becomes a cycle. And that's what was happening to me. I would heal myself or go to a therapist and they'd, prescribe me this, prescribe me that to numb my body and all stuff. But the thoughts and the haunting would not stop. It wouldn't stop. It was repetitive. I see it in everything. I'd even look in little girl's eyes and see a relatable situation and be like looking at their parents, looking around, like trying to protect them and get so mad. Cause I'm like, I could tell it's happening to them because when you go through certain things, you see it in other people, like <laughs> comment below if you, if you know what I'm talking about, when you've been through something, if you've been through the trenches, you experience certain things, you recognize when other people have too, like the conversation is different. And the reason why I'm saying this now is because even when I was going through help, even I wasn't ignorant, I just didn't trust anyone. Even when I went to a therapist when I was young and I had to go to the hospital and get tested and go to court and charge the person when I was young, they brought me to this counseling group. And the way that they counseled me, this one person, the way that they were counseling me, I got up and walked away because I was just like, not saying because they had to go through it to relate to me or to help me. It was just, it didn't seem genuine. It didn't seem like it was coming from a real place. It felt like it was scripted, a book and all stuff. So I know when we're going through things that if we're not trusting you to help us, we're not going to listen to you. Do you know what I'm saying? We're not going to, I don't want to hear nothing you say. I don't want to hear nothing because I do not trust you. And it's not even about fear. It's about knowing you can trust that person. I don't need to be vulnerable to trust somebody. I sense it. I sense it. And the person and the peoples that I've trusted, most of them were not even qualified, like with a degree. Most of them were not even like in an office for me to come in. And these are people that went through and came out. These are people, one person professional, I love her to this day, sat down to help me through my my healing process or at least allowed that door to be open for me to receive help i had to it was a counselor i oh, i'll give her i every time i see her i just want to kiss her feet because i know god sent her being vulnerable doesn't mean that you're going to be open and trust people and those that have been through you know what i'm talking about you know who you can trust and i found that when i was genuinely seeking help i seen god use these people it wasn't the help that I was doing over and over and over and over and over and over because I was trying to heal myself and trying to fix myself. And I got this and I got that. It was so repetitive. It was so repetitive. It was in a circle, same situation, different face, same situation, different face, man. I started blaming the world. Cause I was like, it ain't me. It's not me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh my goodness. But I was just like, as soon as I gave it to God and I got the right help. Hmm. the real healing started. And that was a journey I had to go through on my own. Sometimes we need people to help us, but I, I will speak and say this, the real people that come to help us need to be sent from God. It cannot be who we think we can trust, not knocking them, but that's a part of the cycle of us healing ourselves, trusting who we know because it's a familiar place. I had to be so vulnerable and so transparent and in seeking right, the right thing, hoping that there's better than this. There's better than this guy knocking me out. There's better than this situation. There's it's better than living in this house and this man's taking advantage of me. And then the, this woman that so-called my mother's beating the crap out of me. And then I'm going to school and I'm getting beat up at school. Like there's something more than this. And I craved it so much because I was like staring at other people that were happy, staring at other relationships as I got older saying, is it like, is that real or is that fake? I questioned so many things. And when I started searching within myself, seeing all the broken pieces, realizing that I was broken because of what I was taught and raised to see in that broken state while I went with my biological mother was like, 
there has to be good because this is so bad <laughs> for me, especially when you're young, everything's amplified as much as parents are like, anyways, you're young, you don't know any, you know, they have their version, but when you're a kid and these things are detrimental to you and it scars you and it hurts you, it, we do need to be heard. Do you know what I'm saying? And we recognize that it is bad. So when we see bad, there has to be good. And some people look at bad and say, that's it. And then they fall and that's it. But I was never that type. I was just like, there has to be something better than this. Like this guy's doing this to me. There has to be something better. Like I can't be a woman. And all these women are going through stuff like this. This is crazy. Like my mind used to go like that. Like I'm living in this world and I'm breathing. And this is life. Like who wants to be here? You know what I'm saying? And I kept on seeking because I'm looking around, seeing people smile and laugh. And I see older women laughing with their dogs. I'm looking around like, what are they happy about? And I question, question. And as I got older and the torment of everything that happened in my past was just scarring me that, and, and all my walls became brick solid steel walls. And I didn't, want, I didn't want to let anybody in. And if I did, it was conditional and I was so angry and all that stuff. And I was just like, I need help. And then the repetitive thing that I was trying to shelter myself from or hide myself from or protect myself from was always happening. And I was like, is there something on my forehead? And so in my healing, I, I seeked for the truth. I seeked for real love. Cause I'm like, there has to be, because it's like, when you feel that real love, you know, that it's, it exists. And I felt that with God, I never felt it with a human being. They would say their words, maybe because I was in the state with the, the shield wall, you know, the, the water with the, um, shield. I said the water, cause the water, I heard this, I was like, Dang. <laughs> that was a firecracker. Anyways, when you, sorry, when you feel like you're in, in your steel wall, you see people differently. But then when you start to heal, that wall comes chipping down and you're like, holy smokes, that person was really trying to help me, but I didn't see that because of the, the, the eyes and the, and the protection that you're giving yourself, you don't even realize that you're in a corner. You don't even realize that you isolate yourself. You don't even realize that, but you're doing it. It's justified because you're trying to protect yourself because of what has happened. You know what I'm saying? You're like, I don't want this to happen again, but it just keeps on happening. And so when I received healing, I, I was genuinely seeking for the truth. And because I just let go of everything in terms of like, okay, I don't know where it's going to come from, but I, I need it. And I'd cry all the time when it actually came, it came in a form of a relationship <laughs> and he brought me to the Lord. And, and then that's when I heard about Jesus and how much he loves me and the love that I experienced and was told that he loves me that much, that God sent him for me it broke chains in my life. It broke captivity. It broke bondage. It broke the, the rape and the molestation and the dirtiness and the, and the, and the ill will and the mindset and the dark and gloominess that I had. And it, it, it broke down the walls that I had first for Jesus, not necessarily for people, but first for Jesus. Cause I'm like, you died for me. And so, and you took the knives for me and you did this and that for me and you promised me it would never happen again. So even though I never met Jesus, when I was told that I heard it in my spirit, that that is my answer. And so it allowed the wall to crumble. And it also opened the door to have me face myself and, and what I have been doing in my ang angry state, in my lost state, in my confused state, in my depressed state, in my, uh, I looked at my past like, oh my gosh, you know, like, wow. <laughs> oh, and as he healed me from within, I realized, <clears throat> excuse me, I realized, and he had made me realize that it's not necessarily just a, a mindset or a living every day. It's a spiritual thing. And that's another video because the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, and he'll use people. Trust me. It's not the people that you see doing it. It's the spirit behind them. That's key. Okay. And so even in that, it's a process. I had to go through counseling. I could not do it on my own. So when I went to the counselor, I knew it was from God because I allowed God in. People in my life, speaking in my life, and I'm going to be truthful, even if they were in the church, even if I met them and they're, they're holding a Bible, not everybody was for me and I'm not judging anyone, but not everybody was supposed to be in my close proximity to help me and assist me through my journey. Yes, we can conversate. Yes, we can praise the Lord. Yes, we can worship together. But when it came to the healing portion, I and I have practiced it for many years, not everybody can come close to me. And it's not based off of fear. And I'm glad that I had this from when I was young. It's a level of protecting myself, but that, but now it was turned into good. So I say hi to everyone. I talk to everybody. Even if you hate me, I talk to everybody. But when I was hurt, I guarded myself and I said hi and stuff, but it was a false pretense. It was like guarding myself, even though I'm giving you some of my time, I'm still not trusting you. I'm still not gonna, you know? So having people close to me is a choice and walking with God. I know who to and who not to. 
<laughs> so, yeah, it helps. But I'll say this, the one thing that I felt in, in the healing process and allowing Jesus in is freedom. I feel peace. I, I allow myself to feel joy. The heaviness and the cookiness is off. And, and he teaches me to keep it off because he, he, he let me know what was really happening and why it happened to me. And that's why I'm here in my right mind, you know, because I know that people will say that they went through something, they're, they're, they're healed from it. They brought the person to court and all that other stuff. And it does help physically because, you know, people do wrong things. They should be punished. Even me, if I do something wrong, there is a punishment and a consequence for it. There's always something to be learned in that, right? But even though the person went to jail and even though all this and stuff happened, I still have to deal with myself and the scars and, and the hurt that happened to me. And, and if you don't heal that part, your life will, you, you'll miss out on certain things in life because you haven't completely healed. And that's a, that comes from a willing place that, that, that cannot be forced. So I'm not forcing that on you. I'm just saying that I allowed that because I started to trust God. I allowed it because I wanted my mind to be renewed based off of what was taught to me, what was shown to me, what was done to me. And in that, it healed me so that, you know, when we say the person has hurt us, um, but they can never take my joy. They can't rob me of this. And I'm going to live, I'm going to live my life and show them that I'm living my life. They can't do this and that to me. I no longer speak on that terms because I used to do that. I used to say, oh, he tried to take that from me. He, he can't take that from me. I reclaim my this and that. What I say now is, and it might go over your head, but hopefully you catch this. Whatever that person did to me might have even happened to them. So I practice compassion. I'm like, okay, I don't know what happened in your family line. Certain things you thought was correct and right why you did certain things to me, but I will forgive you for it because you know what? You got to deal with God. <laughs> God loves me enough and I've done so many bad things that God has forgiven me. Why can I not forgive someone that has done something even as bad as that, even as abuse, even as rape, molestation, all that stuff. All those things I've done, all the, a lot more stuff has been done to me, but I forgive them because that's part of setting me free because then I can live my life. I'm not seeking vengeance because vengeance belongs to God. I'm not going to go vendetta as much as my flesh wants to deal with him. Trust me, the way I used to live my life, I used to deal with people, but it's tiring. It's tiring. So God's like, you know, cast your cares upon me and vengeance belongs to him. So God, that's your child. That is your child. And that is your child. All these people did these things to me. I now forgive them because trust me, I could not forgive them on my own. He taught me how to forgive them. <laughs> and I live my life now. So I'm no longer back there. I'm no longer, I'm a new creature. I'm going forward in him, leaving those things behind and everything that I have done, God has forgiven me and he doesn't, he doesn't bring it up anymore. Other people may bring it up. That's on them, but that's another video. But in terms of who has harmed me and who has hurt me, no longer can hurt me anymore, nor will I even walk into another situation or another relationship where those same things will occur in my life because I'm well aware God is protecting me. God has shown me, God loves me. And I don't deserve that. Neither do you. And that's, it's, it's a process. Like I said, it's a process. I came from over here now I'm here and I'm still living my life in that process, trusting God each and every day. I cannot do it on my own. I can't. And he does use people. He does use doctors. He does use friends. He does use counselors. He does use lessons. He does use time to spend alone with him to understand how much he loves me and how much he loves you. But it's a process. And like I said, I opened the door to him and that's when I started to feel freedom and the dirtiness and eckiness and all this stuff lifted. And he's teaching me to maintain that. So it's a long video, but I just want to at least touch base with you and let you know that, you know what, you're not alone. And it's not a script. This is real life. This is real life. And we have a choice. It's either we want healing for ourselves or we can still be mad and miss out on so many blessings, miss out on peace, you know, miss out on a lot. And I tell you, if you were to do it uh, with, like your own will yourself to forgive someone. Trust me, if I didn't have God in my life, I would not forgive not one rotted person. I would deal with them. Trust me, even if it was my last breath, I would deal with them and I'd, and I'd tell God sorry after. But because I want to enjoy my life that he has given me here while I'm breathing and alive and well, that's part of my process. And that's why I was like, God, everything I find hard to do, you need to help me to do it because I can't do it on my own. My flesh will rise up and deal with certain things. So father, you deal with that. You deal with them. And the more that I do that, there's the more that I feel compassion for that person. Cause then God will re reveal certain things to me. Like you don't even know what they've been through. You don't even know why they did what they did. It could be heinous. It could be stealing something from you to actually trying to kill you. You don't know these people, what they've gone through, but you're alive and well, Anne, and I'm covering you and I love you. Right? So continue in me. Don't waste your time. 
Don't drag your feet. Don't hold on to baggage in terms of pain and all that stuff. Give your pain to me. Give your worries to me. Tell me how you feel. Share it with me. And the more that I invited God in is the more, again, that I have peace. And I try to maintain it because I invite him in every area. So it is a process. I'm not going to ramble on anymore, but it is a process. But I'll say this. I congratulate you if you're breathing right now and you're alive and well. I congratulate you because you, in all honesty, that's God's grace right there. So the level of healing now, you should allow that, allow, allow that in your life so that you can live, live your life, not just put it on and show off and, and, and cover it up, actually live your life. Mm. Imagine if this was wine. <laughs> Anyhow, hopefully this video touched you and I'll see you in the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.